continue in English, as my presentation was prepared in English, but as my predecessors, predecessors said, if there are questions, uh, I can understand Italian, of course. <laughs> so, um, we, um, I'm very pleased to, to be here. I work for ERVET, as um, the director said, which is the regional development agency of the Emilia-Romagna region. In the period 2007-2013, we had uh, Emilia Romagna region better had the responsibility of coordinating the participation of the Italian regions, 12 Italian regions, to the Southeast Europe program, and the task related to this of organizing and carrying out the activities of contact points uh, related to the program. Well, uh, I'm the coordinator of such activities. I've been the coordinator for uh, for last seven years, and now uh, I'm I'm belonging uh, to the task force, um, not to the task force, to the core startup team of the forthcoming uh, transnational program that will be substituting Southeast Europe because as you probably know uh, and the recent decision of the Europe by the European Commission confirmed this uh, Southeast Europe as such as a transnational program will no longer exist in the new uh, programming period perspective and will be substituted by uh, three transnational programs but I will touch upon later on on these uh, specific aspects. Um, first of all, I would like to um, um, to uh, illustrate uh, very briefly some of the results achieved by this transnational cooperation, because uh, it's true uh, what uh, Mrs. Comelli said before that. Uh, from from a programming period to another, we have uh, we have had sometimes an active uh, an active moving back and forth, back and forth. But what is not to be, uh, in my opinion, at least, uh, this is um, this uh, back and forth attitude has to be avoided as far as results of projects and outputs are concerned, because we cannot start from scratch each and every time, reinventing the wheel uh, and not, not taking stock of uh, the results that we, we ourselves have achieved. So uh, I think that even in a different framework, what has been achieved under, under the Southeast Europe uh, program is valuable and should be uh, capitalized on and built upon uh, for the new project to be successful and effective as uh, the, the previous one were. So, um, this is the uh, kind of index of my uh, presentation. So, uh, first of all, just a rough idea of the geography uh, of the um, Southeast Europe program. It's 16 countries, the biggest transnational program in Europe. Uh, the most complex, I would say, as it is governed by uh, three different sets of rules uh, because it is funded by three different sources. ERDF, which is of course uh, the main source of financing, IPA, which is the second one in terms of importance, and to a lesser extent uh, EMPI, uh, former uh, EMPI, now ENI, but uh, because uh, the program saw the participation also of um, Ukraine, certain region, uh, certain regions of Ukraine, and of Moldova, certain regions of Moldova, and these countries we know perfectly that are uh, not even part of the enlargement strategy. So uh, you see that uh, when the program uh, was started it was uh, evenly divided it was eight member states and eight non-member states now the, the balance is different for, since uh, July last year because one uh, non-member became member and, and you know perfectly we are talking about Croatia um, main figures 
the, the, the program succeeded in committing all uh, resources, uh, roughly 220 million overall, uh, between ERDF and national co-financing. Uh, and these funds were committed, were, were committed uh, along four core for proposals uh, that were differently managed and differently thought about. The first one was an open call, the second one was a targeted call only targeting uh, those areas of intervention that, that received uh, poor quality project during the first call, so to fill the gaps in, in a way. The third one was uh, a top-down call in which uh, program management, management bodies and national authorities together um, carried out an in-depth analysis of the weaknesses of the previously approved project and spotted some uh, really strong needs in the area and defined what had to be uh, the activities and the results of these strategic projects. And then called for uh, the major stakeholders in the area to, uh, to step forward, to make a step forward and to uh, participate to, to such uh, a venture. And it was luckily uh, not only by luck, but it was uh, a good attempt, a successful attempt. And in the end, uh, the fourth call. You, you can see by, by yourself that um, comparing the number, the number of applications submitted and, and the number of, uh, of uh, projects that could actually be approved, uh, there is a, a huge gap, but this testifies once more of the interest raised by this program in particular and in general by territorial cooperation which is still there for uh, became from objective three and became objective two so <laughs> even even a step forward and uh, apart if we call it interreg or not uh, uh, the, the difference is not in branding the difference is in that yes uh, the regulatory framework and the um, programmatic, uh, programmatory framework that became very much different since uh, the, the era of interact. Now we are uh, in, and I, I would like to touch upon this later on um, during my speech. Um, so coming back, you, you see that uh, many, many applications were submitted during the fourth, um, the four calls, and uh, you can see the amounts that were committed to projects. Where we are now, uh, we are in a phase in which first call projects uh, closed down their, their activities within the end of 2012. Mm, many projects of the second call are closing during these months and within summer. Uh, anyhow, all projects, even third and fourth call ones, uh, will close activities and submit final expenditures within the end of 2014. This is uh, already decided and 2015 will be from for program management authorities to uh, close down. Uh, program uh, accounts and activities. These, um, are, sorry for uh, calling priority axis one, two, three, and four, and not recalling uh, which were the topics dealt by each of these priority axes. Priority axis one is research and development and innovation. Priority access to is protection and improvement of environment and uh, improvement of energy performance uh, overall. Uh, pri priority three is uh, accessibility, both physical, meaning transport, and virtual, meaning ICT and broadband. Fourth is regional development, urban problems, cultural uh, activities, social activities, what is, uh, what is broadly uh, called regional development. These are the funds committed along the different priority axes and you see the difference in, in the role and importance of the three funds. Um, 
I, I would like to spend a couple of words on this, taking profit of the presence of the representative uh, of the Commission, Mr. Besser, because um, I, I, I would like to, to, to go back to the history of this Southeast Europe program. Uh, when the program started, uh, the three funds were managed separately with all uh, the difficulties that you can imagine can derive from such a situation. Different timelines, different reporting obligation, a single project man managed as if they were three. So very, very difficult to handle, both from the beneficiary side and from the program management side. Um, during the, the, the program lifetime, um, the Southeast Europe uh, um, succeeded in making a, what I would call a huge state step forward, integrating the funds, uh, at least IPA funds, under the responsibility of the managing authority, Hungarian managing authority, um, and having having the possibility of uh, one single subsidy contract when, with only one set of accounting rules for every every partner, and with clear responsibility and the possibility of managing uh, a single project as a single endeavor by the number of partners. Um, this model uh, that entails the signature of financing agreement, I, I don't want to bother you with technical details, but uh, <coughs> this management model needs a tripartite agreement between Commission, uh, IPA uh, partner state, and the managing authority, and needs uh, the allocation of, um, of funds by the IPA um, partner countries to the transnational cooperation program so that ERDF rules can apply. And I see a little mismatch between the timelines uh, for programming uh, ERDF, which, uh, which sets the date on the 22nd of September, and the timeline that you illustrated before for the programming uh, of IPA sources that means first of all a framework agree ag agreement and then later on a financing agreement. So um, I think that we, we, we have still space for improvement under, under, under this respect. Um, sorry for this technical... Uh, <laughs> intrusion. So these are uh, the logos of the 122 uh, projects that were financed uh, along, uh, along the four priority axes. Um, many, many of these pro uh, projects uh, saw the participation of one or another beneficiary from this same um, territory of Gorizia and overall from Friuli Venezia Giulia. I, I can confirm what Mrs. Comelli said before. Uh, this is a very, a very active uh, region in cooperation uh, with many ideas and not only ideas, the capacity to implement these ideas in, in, in practice. Here uh, in four slides that you will have the, the opportunity of uh, consulting uh, if you wish, uh, I, I try to summarize uh, the, 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 the most promising results came from the, the, from the Southeast Europe projects. Uh, you see uh, by yourself that being a transnational cooperation program, uh, most of the results are, so to say, soft soft results, no investment, no roads built, uh, no elect uh, electric plants built, but, um, but uh, the opportunity of uh, developing methods, plans, methodology, common standards whereby roads or energy plants can be built better or uh, analyzing the feasibility of a building or not an electricity plant or uh, improving the way uh, business, uh, businesses and particularly SMEs can access finance for innovation 
or building networks of uh, final business angels or uh, reinforcing the cooperation between research bodies and SMEs to, to support innovation once again. Or environment is one of uh, the, the, the topic that was uh, preferred by applicants, by project applicants. Uh, and these are the main results that you can read, but uh, really valuable results that I, I don't want to waste uh, um, more time on, on this because you, you can read them. What, what is the point is that um, from here until when the, the next calls for proposal under the new uh, Transnational Cooperation Program will be ready. Uh, you have the opportunity and in my, in my view the duty of uh, getting acquainted with this bulk of knowledge and results that is available. I will show you later on because for sure the, the new transnational uh, program will take stock of these, of these results and will start, and will start uh, from there onwards. Uh, of new objectives for the project will have to, to start from what was already achieved. This is uh, mm, the strategy that the, the, the Southeast Europe program uh, developed. Um, it was developed through uh, four thematic seminars that were held between end of 2012 and during all 2013, uh, dealing each of the thematic seminar with one of the priority access themes and involving all relevant stakeholders of that priority access and these are the names of the four uh, the four seminars uh, these seminars allowed um, allowed um, the, the, the grouping of project owners into 13 thematic polls uh, I will show you uh, in a minute which are these polls and to build uh, to build cooperation and synergies between uh, projects that were that actually dealt with uh, really overlapping or uh, similar topics or uh, complementary topics, so that the exchange of views, exchange of results could be enhanced and strengthened, and uh, the um, Southeast Europe uh, output library could be created and is available online for you to consult and see which are uh, the actual outputs that were produced by, by these 122 projects. These are the topics for cooperation. You see in red those that, uh, those that have to deal with um, innovation. In uh, uh, blue, uh, those that have to do with accessibility. In green, um, in green environment and in yellow, uh, so to say, um, regional development. This is the outputs library where you can search uh, by different criteria any any of the outputs available from first and second call projects. Uh, very soon there will be available also outputs and results from third and fourth call ones. So these are the new uh, transnational programs that are the successors, in a way, of Southeast Europe. And why? Why uh, they, um, they or, or uh, the decision was taken to uh, split this um, relatively successful program into three new ones? Because one might think that when when he performs good. <laughs> it, should, it should stay there. Uh, because in the meanwhile, uh, a new um, policy framework, uh, I would say, emerged uh, among, among the European, uh, many European Union policies. Uh, the one that goes under the name of macro-regional strategies, in, in a way, uh, mm, that started with the Baltic Sea macro-regional strategy, uh, continued with the then a region macro-regional strategy and now within the end of uh, 2014 
the Council should uh, or will approve uh, the action plan for the um, Adriatic and Ionian macro regional strategy that was presented, published, adopted by the Commission yesterday. Uh, so it's available now for consultation. And uh, like the EU strategy for the Danube region is the guiding, uh, the guiding uh, framework for the Danube transnational program, uh, in the same way the Adriatic Union macro regional strategy will be the guiding policy framework for this new Adriatic and Union uh, transnational cooperation program. There is not a full. Sorry, I will. I will go. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 so uh, I guess. I <laughs> okay. Um, so, but in three minutes I will be finishing. Um, so there is not uh, to be correct, perfect alignment between the transnational cooperation program and the uh, macro-regional strategy. Uh, macro-regional strategy uh, <coughs> strategies uh, are guided by the uh, three no, they, they call it three no principles. No new structures, no new funds, no new regulations. It's a policy framework for coordination among the responsible ministries which uh, can use uh, EU funds cohesion funds but also national funds to implement to implement what they consider to be common solution to common challenges shared by a functional area uh, they used to to be called like this and one functional area is this Adriatic and Union uh, region uh, involving um, I, I, will sh I will show you in a minute the, the eight countries which are involved this is uh, the territory uh, of the program and the macro regional strategy as well. Even if the, for the macro regional strategy, the, uh, the whole of Italy is involved, not only the Adriatic, the Adriatic part. What is different uh, compared to Southeast Europe? Uh, we don't have the participation of FIRM, former Yugoslav Ma Republic of Macedonia, but we have two further regions uh, on the on the <coughs> Italian side, uh, Calabria and Sicily, which are the Ionian region. For the rest, it is uh, the same geography, apart from Romania, Bulgaria, and Austria that are. Um, joining only the Danube part of the previous Southeast. Where we, where we are now with the uh, programming of uh, the Adriatic Union? Uh, four task force meetings have been held. Uh, task force is <coughs> an own body, I would say, where uh, national authorities responsible for cohesion policies in the participating countries uh, meet and decide which are the strategy, which are the objectives, which are the measures to be uh, designed, implemented and financed. Um, experts, uh, external experts uh, charged with the task of um, um, actually writing the program um, and carrying out the exempt evaluation have been contracted. Um, the task force uh, reach an agreement to assign management responsibility to uh, Emilia Romagna regional government. So this is the reason why I'm involved in also in this in this new adventure. And um, the the new managing authority will be uh, Emilia Romagna region. And uh, my uh, my my employer Ervet will be hosting the joint secretariat, which is the core technical of the technical heart of any, of any program. Um, stakeholder so consultation will be launched very soon according to the partnership principle that, were, that, that was reminded before and so I hope you will be in a position to participate to this online survey that will be followed by uh, at least two thematic seminars early in September so as to 
take on board all your suggestion and suggestion from stakeholders. Um, I, I already showed you the, the slide about financial resources. Uh, it's 87 million ERDF. Uh, we yet don't know uh, the IPA uh, amount of resources, but I've been told, that, and I, I don't know if Mr. Besser can confirm this, I've been told that this decision on IPA allocation to transnational programs will come early in July. <laughs> so, uh, thank you. If you have any question, I'm available. Thank you.